Well, as usual, totally awesome fishing. Turns up late. It is quarter to twelve here at Diva. We, we just looked at the, at the large lake they've got there and a bit of colour in it. I put a white chomper on because I wanted to do that stalking first and just see because it looks like no anglers have looked around here. All the other anglers are on the big lake. Now when these fish have been rested, which they obviously have, nobody's been hammering them, you can come up. I've got a feeling they were yesterday's fish, these. I think they're left over stock. We're here on a Monday and obviously the week... Oh, he's going now. The weekends can be busy with the anglers so the fish get the hammer. But they still have a short-term memory, so they will forget all those angles yesterday, providing you're careful, and that's just what I've been, nice and careful, walking around the margins, it's tough fishing, I've got to tell you, it sounds stupid to say that, oh, it's like my fifth cast and it's tough fishing, but it's, I should say it's tough spotting them, that's what I should say, so we're going to have to catch what we can today, and this one was on a white chomper, I came down the bottom end and there's just a pool of little trout, a little pool in between the weed beds where the trout are. In fact, it'd be better, there's a big helicopter over there, military one doing manoeuvres, and I'll tell you what, I wish I was up in there, because you could look down through the water better. I think he's wrapped on the line. He's tangled up there, but... There he is, he's untangled. Not a bad old fish. Not a bad fish at all. Not a bad fish at all. That chomp is just hanging there, absolutely hanging there. Let's see if we can get him in the net. Now I'll just slack off a bit. Always make sure you wet the net first before you sink it. He's in. That is a very, very nice trout of about seven pounds. Beautiful condition. Look at that. Absolutely fabulous fish. Beautiful silver. But I think we're going to have trouble. We're going to try, have to try and get further and further out casting. At least that's number one in the net. Many anglers plant themselves in the one spot and just wait for the fish to swim past them. That's fine, but what if they don't swim past? It's then up to you to go looking for the fish. Move carefully around the margins using the rushes as a screen and try to spot another trout. It could be static, it could be cruising. Locating the fish is key to a capture. Get the fly right in front of them and try to induce that take. It's a really exciting way of fishing. Right guys, I'm onto my first fish here at Diva. Um, tough fishing today. We've been here probably about 40 minutes, I'd say now. Uh, you saw Graham get that last one. And uh, they just weren't, they weren't coming after the fly like they do, you know? I didn't feel right about it, so I just practiced my casting, as I'm, you know, I'm only a beginner. So I was just practicing my casting, and then I felt a bump. Obviously I've missed the fish, but I saw the fish, he kept going for the fly, tweaked it a couple of times, and then I just stopped it and let it sink a bit more. And then a couple more tweaks then and he was on it in a flash. So they're taking them, but slowly today. Right guys. Totally awesome fishing strikes again. This is my first fish of the day. You saw Graham's earlier. Um, we've been struggling today. We haven't been here long, but the visibility is poor. Not good visibility at all. I got this one on the Pearly Daddy. Um, I've managed to draw this one out from the middle of the lake and hooked him right in close, actually, right in the margins. It took that long for him to take it. 
um, change my tactics a bit, let it sink a bit more this time rather than initially when I cast the fly, tweak it on the surface to get their attention. I let this one sink, tweaked it a bit more, he followed me all the way in and then eventually, thank God, he took it. So my first fish of the day and my first fish at Deva Springs. And I'm happy. What a fish. Totally awesome. Diva Springs is the great equaliser for anglers. It covers all ages and experienced or beginner alike will have a great chance of hooking some of those hard fighting rainbow trout. Take it easy, keep a tight line, but always be prepared to release it as these trout are big. They can snap your leader in a flash. Hooking up is one thing, getting the trout in the net and on the bank is another. Well, this one I've got stripping in like a demon, but I think the fish has got me in the weed. I'm at, oh, I might even have lost. No, he's, he's weeded, he's broke me off, I think. Yeah, something's gone there. I felt it drive into the weed, and I've got nothing. He's took the fly. That's what I call totally disappointing, and that's a polite word, putting it. This is another totally awesome trout fishing tip. Now, the small lake being sheltered, the weed on the bottom pops up towards the surface and it can be a real pain. Most people don't know that actually builds up during the day. The fishery generally net it off at night or on the first thing in the morning. But during the, you know, the day it gets progressively bad and it's two o'clock so there's a lot there. So it's pushed it onto another lake. But there's a different type of weed that the trout will stay in and which you can get trout from. But it's a question of vertical fishing rather than casting out a long way. And it's down here and all this... Well, I don't even know the name of the weed, to be honest. I, I wish I did, but I don't. But it comes up in vertical strands, and the trout will go in between that. It's like a sort of trees. They stand there like trees. And if you get a good fly with a bit of tinsel, like this pearly daddy, and just lower it down in there, you can just jiggle it. We call it jigging up and down vertically. And you'd be surprised. You get a big trout can come right out from underneath that weed or push in between those stems, shouldering its way through, and it'll take that fly as well. So that's called jiggling it, but it's on a vertical plane, you're up and down, so you keep the rod high. You can even cast outside that marginal weed, but if you do cast out, I'll just show you. Don't strip with your line down low, because you're going to pull into the weed. Hold it up high like this, and you'll see the trout come in and just jiggle right up to it. Now this weed, you can generally, I'll just show you, you can drop the fly right in amongst it, and if you draw it out, it only just, it just slides out, so it's all clear. So, you get this weed, it lays flat on the surface, but down underwater is vertical. Don't neglect looking at that, it's a good spot. I'll give you one more tip before we go catching again. Okay, another totally awesome tip is, later in the day, the fish, where they're pressured by the anglers all casting around the edges, they're only gonna be casting, you know, 10 yards out because that's where they can physically see the fish, is you need to go further and further out. But there's a different method that they seem to take. And do you know what, I don't know why, but this is how it works. You punch a line as far as you can get it. Tuck the reel underneath your arm. You're going to point the line, point the rod straight down the line, and you're going to do hand over hand like this. Really fast. And do you know what? The trout have never seen anything like this before. Really, they do it. They do it on reservoirs, but because that's now a constant speed, there's every chance as fast as I'm going there, a trout is gonna slam it. And it's because it looks totally different. It's not the normal little fast tweak, 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 tweak. They get pushed out by the anglers fishing close in. So anytime, say, two o'clock onwards, you wanna get it out as far as you can where the trout have been pushed. Give it two or three seconds for the fly to sink under your arm, tuck it under your arm, point down the line, and just hand over hand like this. You can go pretty fast, you'd be surprised. They will absolutely slam it. And you pick up those bonus trout. Diva Springs is what is called a put and take fishery. 
the trout are put into the lakes and it is sent up to the anglers to take them out with a rod. Trout have to be stocked at a large size because British waters rarely have enough protein in them in the shape of natural food for them to grow that large. This is fish farming, but aimed at providing high quality sport for the fly fishermen. Diva grow some of the largest trout anywhere in the country. The food they use is a high protein pellet that boosts their weight quickly and keeps them in peak condition. When you have an 8 to 12 pound Diva Springs Rainbow Grab Your Fly, you know you're in for a battle. And by using sinking pellets, every trout in the stock pond gets a good chance of some food. And that means they should all grow at the same rate. However, even under controlled conditions like here, there will inevitably be a few fast growers and these are graded out to a separate pond and fed on again and they have been known to reach weights of world record proportions. So how about a 30 pound rainbow trout? Dreaming? I fear not, you better wake up if you want to catch a Diva Springs trout. Stocking is done on a daily basis. The anglers fill in those daily catch returns at the lodge so the staff know exactly how many trout and what size to stock for the next day. This is in order to retain the fish density and give everyone a chance of some action. It doesn't take those trout long to settle down. It's then up to you, the fly fisherman, to find out where they are. Right guys, I just took my own advice. I fished in amongst those stalks, the vertical stalks, jiggling away, and then one came straight out of it, wallop, bang, straight on. But, he's taken me into the nasty weed, it's not the nice weed. So I'm not even sure gonna get him out, but we'll give it a go. Now I'm gonna try and reach this one with a net. Now he's absolutely locked me into the weed. Let's go around and see if we can get in the jungle and try and get something out of it. I'm pretty sure he's still on. I can actually see him upside down there in the water, so I don't know if we can get this one or not. We'll have to have a go. If I pull too hard, it's going to snap, but the fish is laying there. So lucky. Leaned right out there and I actually got a second rod and tried to hook all the weed off it and I've actually got the fish out. Do you know what? It's an absolutely totally awesome clonker. It's much bigger than I thought it was. I thought it was about five pounds. No way, Jose. Look at that, man. That is a nice trap. That is a beauty. There's the pearly daddy just in its jaw. I have a feeling it's not going to... Oh, where's the net? I'll find it. Come on. I think I've got a bit of a, a snarl up on there. And he's trying to get me straight back in those brushes again. Oh, no. Come out. That fishing's tough today, guys, you know. You might think we're always catching fish. And we, we're up against it because we always start late, but I'm going to go for this fish now. Come on, my beauty. This is a totally awesome Diva Springs chunk of trout. Look at the size of this one. I'll tell you what, guys, this is not far off seven, eight pounds, I reckon. Let's get up on the bank and have a look at it. Oh, do you know what? This is probably the nicest looking trout I have caught this season. That is salmon sized trout. And I brought it up vertically. It was on a vertical plane, as I told you. Boy, was I lucky though. It went buried in the snag. It was just like upside down. I thought it was, as we say, totally toast. It's totally toast now. What a beautiful looking fish. Almost like a salmon, that one. The shape of it. And it took the pearly daddy with, well, relish. Didn't see it, actually saw the uh, white of the mouth snap. But that, guys, is 
fish of the day. So you've got some tips there. We're going to fish on a little bit. The weather's shutting us down now. But the other thing is the weather when it does rain like this sometimes keep that algal weed and bloom down a bit. So we might get lucky. We might just winkle out another one. Who knows? But what a day. We've had some, we've had some good fish even though the conditions are tough. Right guys, persistence has paid off. For two and a half hours, at least two and a half hours, I've been trying to catch these four or five trout that were hanging about in a swim over there. And they just, I had four hookups all lost within about two, one or two seconds on the hookups. I didn't understand why I called Graham over. He came up to me. He reckons I was striking them too hard. You can strike fish too hard. When they're in close, it's completely different to striking them further out. It's tipping down with rain. We've had our free shower for the day. We've had some totally awesome trout fishing. It has been hard, we're not gonna lie, but we stick at it and we always come up with the goods. Totally awesome trout fishing. Until next time.